test on the transmissions. The five-speed manual gearbox used on all 600s is fitted with a variety of gear ratios. It has increased synchromesh capacities on third and fourth gears. A main shaft brake is fitted to allow clean selection of reverse gear. And shift cables are used instead of rods. The automatic transmission used is the E4AT, which features a compact three shaft design. It features a new seven position gear selector and provides the option of first gear hold. The transmission control module features a self diagnosis facility, which is triggered through the service connector and displays the diagnostic trouble code on the instrument pack. Moving on, all Rover 600 models are fitted with speed proportional power steering that operates in the same way as the system used on the 827 range. The fluid level in the reservoir, which should be checked when the engine is cold, should be maintained using unipart power steering fluid. Detailed checking and fault finding procedures relating to the steering system can be found in the service repair manual. One other important point, vehicles equipped with a supplementary restraint system will have an airbag mounted in the middle of the steering wheel. So whenever working on or around the steering column, always follow the recommended precautions outlined in the service manual to prevent accidental detonation. Double wishbone type suspension is used at both the front and rear of the Rover 600. Its design allows it to absorb acceleration cornering and braking forces while at the same time keeping the wheels as perpendicular to the road surface as is possible. This maximizes grip and steering feel. The front suspension consists of a pressed steel upper arm, a knuckle or swivel hub, a lower arm, a radius rod, a combined gas and hydraulic damper and coil spring assembly and finally an anti-roll bar. The wheel bearing is integrated into a housing which bolts to the swivel and is replaced as an assembly. And finally, there is a conventional drive flange and brake disc. The camber of the front suspension is not adjustable, but if necessary, caster angles can be altered by adding or removing shims from the forward radius rod mounting. The wheel alignment can be adjusted via the tie rods in the normal way. Now on to the rear. Here, the suspension consists of an upper arm, a knuckle, which houses the wheel bearing and hub, two unequal length lower arms, a combined gas and hydraulic damper and coil spring unit, a trailing arm, and again, an anti-roll bar serves to improve the overall handling characteristics. The unusual length and shape of the rear knuckle allows the upper arm to be located further outboard than normal, which as a result allows for a larger boot space. You'll find the upper arms are stamped with an L or an R to identify left from right, while the longer and shorter lower arms are also identified and must only be fitted in their correct positions. The inner fixing bolt securing the shorter lower arm features two offset flanges. The rear wheel alignment can be adjusted by loosening the nut and simply turning the bolt, which will either pull the arm in or move it out. Finally, two notes of caution. If you're working on a hoist and intend to remove part or all the rear suspension, before you do, put some ballast in the boot to compensate for the uneven front to rear weight distribution. And if you're replacing a damper, always relieve its pressure by drilling a small hole through its body before you discard it. Now on to brakes. Rover 600s use a conventional servo-assisted diagonally split braking system, which features ventilated discs at the front and non-vented discs at the rear. The ABS-6 anti-lock braking system is fitted to those vehicles which feature anti-lock brakes. Here again, it's a system which shares many similarities with the ALB systems seen on previous Rover models, 
and is almost identical to the ABS-6 system used on the 93 model year Rover 2 and 400 series. Like its predecessors, it's controlled by a single ECM, which you'll find mounted in the boot, where you'll also find the failsafe relays. You'll also notice most ABS wiring connectors are coloured orange, making them very easy to locate when fault-finding. You should be aware, when starting a car equipped with ABS, a clunk may be heard from the modulator. This is due to the operation of the solenoid valves within the modulator and is entirely normal. The ABS-6 system displays its diagnostic trouble codes using the ABS light on the instrument panel. When the ECM detects a fault, the ABS light comes on and stays on. In this condition, the braking system will continue to work as normal, although there will be no anti-lock operation. To make the lamp display the diagnostic trouble code, bridge out the two-pin service connector and switch the ignition on. The lamp will come on for one second and then go out for two seconds before it starts to flash the first code, leaving a five-second gap before repeating the code or flashing a second code. Up to three faults can be stored at any one time. You'll find the trouble code index in the ABS section of the service repair manual. To clear the ECM's memory, you'll need to remove the 15 amp ABS fuse, B2 in the underbonnet fuse box, for more than three seconds. The ABS system can also be tested using microcheck together with microlink. When doing so, always follow the instructions given by microcheck carefully. And finally, the handbrake is adjustable and will require adjustment if the brake is not fully applied within 7 to 11 notches of handbrake lever movement. So the main points of the steering, suspension and braking systems are All Rover 600s are fitted with speed proportional power assisted steering which uses unipart power steering fluid. Double wishbone suspension is used at the front and rear of all 600s. The caster of the front suspension is adjustable. The design of the rear suspension knuckle allows for a larger boot space. All the rear suspension arms are identified for position. And the rear wheel alignment can be adjusted by way of the shorter lower arm fixing bolts. The ABS-6 anti-lock braking system is used. Most of its electrical connectors are coloured orange. The ABS-6 system incorporates a self-diagnosis facility which is triggered through the service connector and displayed on the instrument panel. And finally, the parking brake should be fully applied within 7 to 11 notches of handbrake lever movement. Now on to another important safety feature available on selected Rover 600 models. The supplementary restraint system. The system works in conjunction with the seat belt and is designed to reduce driver injury during frontal impact when the force of the impact exceeds its preset minimum.